What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another MMA superstar. This time we get to talk to Hurricane Shane Burgos, who just signed with the PFL and is already slotted to fight at an upcoming card here. It's called PFL 10 2022 Championships. It is a pay-per-view. Oh, man, what an opponent as well. Marlon Marais, great stuff there by the PFL. Hello, Shane. Welcome to MMA Junkie Radio. How are you? Thanks for having me, guys. I'm good. Yeah, so that was quick. You had your last fight in Long Island. It was awesome. Everybody was raving about it. Quick free agency. They scoop you up. Now you got to fight. Holy cow. You know, I've seen some free agencies that take a year before they finally decide what, what, what they're doing. Yours was handled quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, this is my second time doing the, the free agency shit. And um, the first time took four, at least four, four or five months. This time was... Yeah, I, I not only I, I signed to a new promotion and I got a fight booked all within what fucking two months. <laughs> yeah, and you know if you could take us back to it, we'll talk about Marlon Rice, of course. But if you could take us back to it, because we haven't talked to you about it, was it just as simple as like they just opened a briefcase and the money was good, or was it the way they treated you, respect, or did they have a vision, you know, of something that meshed with what you're looking for? What what was it that made you go, man? Where was the contract I need to sign? Yeah, the money, uh, you know, just straight up, just the, the money was too good for me to pass up. I couldn't say no to that money. I got to feed, man. Um, that the the first time I did the free agency thing, and they, they gave me an offer, and it was a great offer the, at, the first time. But I, I, in my head, I was like, you know what? I'm a UFC fighter. At the time, I wasn't a prize fighter. Now, this time coming around, I'm a little bit older now. I'm 31 years old, and I'm like, I'm a prize fighter. And then that's a prize. What, what I'm getting paid now is that's, that's, a, that's a prize. And then on top of that, you get the million-dollar tournament. So it's one of those things where, and then on top of that, you got me doing the commentating gig, which is setting me up for when I'm done competing in the sport. So it, it, it was a no-brainer when you when you lay down all the facts and you make like a pros and cons chart, which I did for the first time and I did again for this time. And this time it was just – it was clear. How much do you think the Long Island fight had to do with it? Because, man, you spilled blood, guts, tears. Like fans were on their feet. So it was, it was a strong close, you know, but not to say that before that there was question marks about – how good you were. You've been a great featherweight for many years. Yeah, no, I feel like I, I th my whole body of work speaks for itself. I feel like I it, 11 fights in the UFC, 8 and 3 total record. Um, The three fights that I did lose were competitive and close fights. Um, I never got my ass whooped. I never got smoked in any fights, you know what I mean? So I feel like that the culmination of that, all of that added up to, to the deal that I got now. We see it in other sports. A lot of, a lot of athletes, when they know it's a free agent year, um man they'll rise to the occasion you know and all of a sudden it's like 50 home runs or or uh triple triple digits uh what do they call triple doubles in basketball or 40 you know uh, touchdowns you know passes or whatever i hope i'm hope i'm not losing you here i don't know if you follow other sports but you know that no, they call I, it you know what i'm talking about then no i don't i don't follow any any other sports but i, I mean I, i've heard those terms before but i don't yeah I'm fighting yeah <laughs> well, what's what's an example of a team that you might kind of follow, like the Mets, maybe, or someone? Dude, I don't follow any sport at all except for mixed martial arts. Boxing is like a close second, but not even close you know, on the grand scheme of things. I watch, I, I eat, sleep, and breathe. This this is this is my shit. I, I love MMA. So, if somebody were to tell you, hey, I got Game Seven tickets to the Knicks in the finals, which I know sounds ridiculous because the Knicks are awful, but let's just say they did, you'd go, nah, I'm cool. Uh, for, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. If, if if I'm not if I'm not dieting for a fight, hell yeah, I'm gonna go and enjoy myself and have a good time, just about eating the food and just enjoying the atmosphere. But would I ever spend money for those tickets? No, no, never. Fair enough, Marlon Marais. What do you think of the signing and the initial booking of you versus him? I'm I was surprised at first, but then when I thought about it, I was like, you know, it kind of makes sense because this is the first ever PFL pay per view. So then they want to stack the card with these fights that people want to see and who who doesn't want to see this fight it's one of those fights that it's his first fight at, at at this weight class and um he's a guy that is super dangerous super super explosive so him versus me i feel like that's it's a no-brainer why, why they put that on, on the pay-per-view card and they put me they're putting us like right before the co event i think it is which is another smart move uh, just to get those people to, to buy the pay-per-view it, it it's a fight that you could run a thousand times and not one time will it be boring kind of like my last couple fights <laughs> Right. If, uh, you know, since it sounds like you're definitely immersed in our sport, do you even bother watching video and all that? Do you leave that to your coaches or, or do you already know how Marias fights, what he brings to the table? 
So a little bit of both. Before, back, like, maybe like three fights ago, I didn't really watch any film. Um, this is only like the third or fourth fight that I'm actually studying film. And me and my coaches, we sat down, we broke down. Usually I just let them do it because I don't like to get too consumed with um what my opponent can do. Like I, But I already know him. I mean, I've seen all his fights. I, Like I said, I'm a huge fan of the sport. So I've, I've, I've seen every single UFC fight he's had. I've even seen most of his WSOF fights. So I know exactly what he's good at. I know exactly what he's not so good at. Um, but just breaking it down and watching film the last couple of weeks, um, I'm even more confident. You know, it's funny you bring that up because that's actually what I was going to ask you about. People getting kind of wrapped up into things, yeah. uh, watching too much video. Yep. That situation with him retiring and then all of a sudden coming back, uh, do you ever think about that? Does that change any of your perspective of him? Or or like you said, do do you just kind of not want to get too wrapped up into things? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not thinking about it too much. I'm. I'm not gonna give it more thought than it needs. Um, he's coming into this his first fight at 145, so I think he probably is looking at uh, like a new uh, a revival of his career at a new weight class. Um, that's fine. I I I completely see what he what what his plan is here. But uh, my job is just to shut that down, and um, that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm not, I'm not really thinking too much about what he wants to do after this fight or before this fight. I, I don't really care. Is there anyone that you spoke to fighter wise that's been through these situations with the PFL? Cause every time somebody new comes in after like the second or third interview, they always kind of tell us the same thing, man, as much as I prepared, I wasn't really expecting for it to be like this. Was there anybody that you spoke to that kind of told you, look, this is, this is kind of how you have to train for this. This is what it's like being with the PFL. Can you share any of, of that uh, topic? I, I haven't. That's a, that's a great question. No, I, I haven't. And, 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 it's a completely new uh, challenge for me because of the, the, the way the, the, the season works where you're going to basically have five fights in a season to win the million dollars. So obviously I'm planning on winning all my fights. So that's five fights within like eight or nine months. So that, that, that in and of itself is a challenge, not just physically, but mentally like to be in camp for that long. And then like, right when you're done with the fight, you can't go out and celebrate. You can't go out and I mean, you can maybe do it for a day or two, but it's right back to cutting weight. I mean, so that, that's a challenge in and of itself. You know, the other day we talked to Jim West, Aspen Lads coach. She just signed with PFL. Yeah. And he was talking about, A, how much of an upgrade the money is. But on top of that, how many of the other organizations came calling? Was it just PFL or did other organizations come? And, and in the end, um, can you maybe share what, what the vision was for you to make that final decision? It was just the PFL as far as, like, I, there was no other close competitor at, at, at that point. Um, it, it was just the PFL, and then how did how how the the what was the second party question? How how did it come about? Uh, so in other words, you're you're at the end your decision process and the vision of what you see yourself in PFL. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, the money, the money just spoke to me. I'm not all about the money, but when it's that much of a difference, and I got kids, and I have to make sure their their, their college is all situated and stuff like that. If they choose to go to college, like. It's done after the, the, this, this, the deal I signed. It's, it secures them. It secures me. It secures their futures. It's a no-brainer when I sit down and I make that pros and cons chart and I, and I do all the pros for the PFL. I'm going to be making a stupid amount of money. And by the way, I guess I haven't asked this, but um, once they offered it, was no more talk with the UFC either in a match or nothing like that? Uh, no, they we knew that they weren't going to match it. If they matched it, then every single fighter on the UFC roster is going to have to get a pay increase. It's not even, they, they literally can't match it. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm getting paid, what I'm getting, getting paid now, if they were to match, which would be fucking awesome. That'd be cool if they would, did that because then everybody else would be getting more money. But that's the thing. Like it's, there's no shot that they would be able to match it. Got it. All right. Um, And not to harp on it. Cause you've turned the page. You sound like you're ecstatic to be with the PFL. We right. love covering the PFL, but I think it's a I think it's a valid question. One thing that Dana White had said was they plan on doing a PI in Puerto Rico. I believe there's Puerto Rican oh, yeah. descent in your family, right? Yeah, I'm half Puerto Rican. Yeah, yeah. And, and so they they talked about possibly a PI, which usually means leads to a show and all that. How about the PFL? Have they told you anything in that regard? You know, now that they plan, that, that they have gone international, and uh, they seem to like be evolving and looking to do things, you know, uh, that, that are different outside of, you know, just regular season and, and playoffs, yeah. the pay-per-view overseas contenders, a uh, series that they're having. Did they mention anything like that to you? 
so they did so they did mention too much specifics but the, the challenger series that's one of the things like another part of the deal that that i was so excited about was i'll be able to commentate for this which is like i said before it's going to set me up for when i'm done competing in the sport i'll still be able to be involved in the sport which is exactly what i want to do because i love this sport so one of the things they said is that they're going to do a lot of overseas shows for the challenger series so that i'll be out there commentating on those and dude you're going to pay me to talk about fights like you kidding me that's a that's a sign me the fuck up <laughs> Puerto Rico will be one of them. Did they hit that? They, they did not. They didn't specify where. They, they did say Europe, though. But Puerto Rico before that would be that would be cool. Yeah, I imagine. All right. Um, how many people are going to be in attendance, man? I, I imagine a lot of people are going to roll in from the Bronx yeah. to Manhattan. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thought, yeah. Dude, I, I anytime anywhere I fight, my family, friends, they all they they follow me anywhere, w w any part of the country that I, or even the world. I fought in Canada. I had a bunch of people there, so it doesn't matter where it is. But the fact that it's in New York City, Madison Square Garden, on Black Friday when everyone's already off of work, everyone is coming. I don't, like I get all my uncles, all my cousins, all my aunts, all my all my friends, all my, my brothers, all my family. Like it's it's gonna be packed. My teammates, it's gonna be it's gonna be wild. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, we're extremely happy for you, and uh, thanks for the time today. You Thank versus Marias, and we get to see it in a few months. Heck. Right. Uh, a month and a half or something like that. Yep. I think that, that, that that's a great addition to the pay-per-view. Thanks so much for your time today, Shane. No problem. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for having me.